Hello and welcome to a tutorial on the unit time scheduling system. So as you can see, we're on the homepage of the Purdue University Northwest website. Um, if you click on your My PNW link and click um, log in to your My PNW, this is going to um, give you access to the unit time system. So I'm going to go ahead and put my um, login, which is your career account information. So it's your career account login and then your um, password as well. So we'll go ahead and log in. And Udatime, you're going to be using um, to schedule conference rooms, um, event spaces for your student organizations, um, basically utilizing it um, to schedule anything on either the North Central or the Calumet campus. So as you can see, um, I hit the employee tab, and from there, I went, or I'm going to go to Unitime. So now uh, unit time is loading. So we're in the unit time system now. And um, you can see that we are in fall 2016 for the PNC session. Um, so, you know, you can obviously um, change your session if you want to. The first thing that we're going to do is actually um, do a room search just so that you understand how to actually search for rooms. So if you click events, um, on the left hand corner and you go to room availability um, there's a page that's going to pop up and a um, bunch of calendars for the fall semester so we're going to choose October 21st you can see it's already highlighted and we're going to choose um, 1130 to 1230 and what I'm going to do to search for the rooms that are available during that time I'm just going to hit search and this is going to search for all of the um, rooms that are non-academic rooms that are available on um, the campus that I have selected. So again, we're in the PNC um, academic session. So you can see the Dworkin Student Activities Complex, the LSF building, the Schwarz building, um, the plaza, the picnic area, which are outside um, venues that you can reserve, and then the technology building. Um, so say I decide that I want to go ahead and schedule an event you can just click add event and then you always have to give the event a name so we're gonna go ahead and call this um, open mic for student organizations um, and where I, the academic session is, is where you can actually change what campus location you are at. So there's this double arrow right here. It's very faint, um, but you can click that and it will pull up fall 2016 PNC, fall 2016 PUC. So you can choose between the two different campuses there. Um, I always leave special event, um, expected attendance. We're going to say that we're going to have 50 students in attendance. The first name is obviously um, going to be whatever your first name is, and then your last name, then your title, and then we're going to look at putting in our email and our phone number. So once we have done that, then we can go ahead and um, put any additional emails in that you want. So a lot of times when I'm scheduling rooms for um, student organizations, I will go ahead and put um, whatever student we um, are working with and collaborating with, I'll put their email in so that they understand that um, they have access to everything once the, the event is generated in the Unitime system. So then I'm going to go ahead and add meetings. That's the next step that you want to do. So again, it's already set because we did a room availability. So it's the 21st from 11.30 to 12.30. Um, and we're going to go ahead and hit next. 
And here's an, another way to see the room availability. Um, so you can see any place that is blank, um, that doesn't have anything written in it, is open and available for you to utilize and put a request in. Um, so like you can see some areas are non-reservable space or they may have um, special notations that um, you know only student organizations are allowed to use or um, it's a non-reservable space like the cafeteria for example. So we're going to say that we want um, LSF 144 in, um, for this event. So I'm going to highlight and select LSF 144 and hit select. So now that we have selected our room, um, this page pops up. So any time that we have um, reserved LSF 144 or LSF 002, at least on the North Central campus, we have to do a special um, request. And that's always um, can be found online. So I'll actually take you to that site right now. So if you open up a new page and you go to the PNW website, if you go to faculty and staff and you scroll down to room reservations, um, under room reservations, you want to use room reservation procedure for the North Central campus. And um, the first three links are the links that you want to um, kind of pay attention to. So we reserved LSF 144, so I'm going to choose LSF 144. And the document is going to download, and it's available um, on the lower left hand of my screen. So now we have our extra sheet that we have to fill out. And we're going to say it's for organization members only. And first, we have to make sure that we're um, enabling our editing. Um, so organization members only. And um, we're going to say we want um, convocation style because it's open mic night. Um, we're not going to offer food for this event. Our setup time. See, we put um, 11.30, um, we're going to go ahead and actually make this event start at 12, so it's only going to be a half hour event. You just want to make sure that when you're scheduling your events that you are providing enough time for setup and teardown, um, because that's always really, really important. So yes, we obviously really want a sign holder so that we can market the event. And I always choose both locations um, by the stairwell going downstairs in the LSF building and also right outside of LSF 144. So the coat rack, um, because we're doing this um, kind of could be chilly. We're going to go ahead and put yes, and a registration table is a yes, for me at least, so that we can kind of gauge how many people have attended. Um, and I will go ahead and put it right out in the hallway. So then you can put any additional six foot tables that are needed. Um, we'll probably just have one so that we can put any like awards or anything like that that we want. Location of tables we can put in front of the room. And the number of chairs needed, we said an estimation of 50 people attending, so we're going to go ahead and put 50 chairs. Uh, we don't need a podium for this event, and we are going to go ahead and request a stage because it's an open mic. So then you're just going to save this form, and we're going to go ahead and save as, um, put it in the student live folder. Okay, so now that that's done, we go back to Unitime, and you can see on my screen now that there's an attachment area. So I'm going to choose the file, and we're going to put um, our document that we just created into 
the form. So now you can see that it's uploaded my form that is basically telling the facility staff how I want everything laid out. So um, if you noticed on the form, and I'll actually pull it back up, there's a spot where you can put in um, other and requires a diagram. So if you work with Angel Cable on the North Central campus, she will actually help you with creating a diagram for the space. Um, we've used that for Welcome Week and um, for you know career fairs, stuff like that, where you need a specific layout for an event. Um, so just remember that that's always an option. So now that we have our file uploaded, um, we're going to go ahead and create event. And once we create the event, we're going to go ahead and um, get this screen that pops up. And you can see that it has not been approved, but it's pending. So as your events are approved, you'll get a notification through the Unitime system that it has been approved, um, but you can also check in the Unitime system for um, your reservations. So I'm going to actually show you how to do that now. Go to events and to filter we're going to go ahead and put in instead of my events I'm going to put my last name and Amanda because that is my name. And then you can see that it pop, uh, pops up that says requested by. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put Amanda shocked and then I'm going to search. So then this is going to search for all the rooms that I have actually scheduled for this fall semester. And currently, with the Unitime system, we're working by semester. So as of right now, we can only schedule for the fall semester. Um, there is talk about potentially changing that in the future and maybe being able to reserve a, sem a semester ahead of time. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but you can see like all of the events that I have pending. And then you can also see the ones that have been approved. So if you need to go back into um, an event, say you need to attach a diagram that you couldn't attach right then and there, you just click on the event and then you can edit the event. And then you can choose a file, upload it, and then hit update event, which is down at the lower right hand side of the screen. So in a nutshell, that really is um, kind of your tutorial on utilizing Unitime. But feel free to contact our office at any time if you need any assistance. Um, one thing that I really want to mention to um, you guys as student organization advisors is that um, only you are allowed to schedule in Unitime. So your student organization officers do not have access to schedule in Unitime. Um, that is a, a policy set forth by the university. So if you're trying to get your student organization officers in um, this process, it's going to be rather difficult because they don't have access. However, you want to make sure that your student organization officers are completing the event form because we need that in order to process any Unitime request. So if I get something from a student organization advisor and I don't have record of that in the event forms that we have received, then I will shoot you an email and say, hey, you know, what is this event about? I don't have an event form. Um, could you please have one of your student organization officers fill one out so that I get more information about the event. Um, but other than that, um, like I said, don't hesitate to contact the Office of Student Life. We're always willing to help um, with any event planning situation that you have. So um, once you're done with Unitime, you can go ahead and just log out. 